The globe faces looming food crisis. U.S. sees Africa as growing military competition. Taking antidepressants long term can lead to heart disease. Gunmen killed 11 at Russian army base. Thousands protest soaring prices in Paris. Fire knocks out online messaging services in South Korea. India launches 75 digital banking units. More bomb shelters in Okinawa as Taiwan tensions rise. Hello, I'm Johnny. Thank you for joining us on Funding News. It's Tuesday, October 18th, and here are your top stories. According to Fortune magazine, around the world, countries that rely on food imports are grappling with a destructive combination of high interest rates, a soaring dollar, and elevated commodity prices, eroding their power to pay for goods that are typically priced in the greenback. Many importers are struggling with rising costs, shrinking capital, and difficulty in obtaining dollars to ensure their shipments are released from customs on time. The World Food Program says the globe is facing its largest food crisis in modern history. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization said while global food commodity costs have fallen for six straight months, the soaring dollar threatens to erode some of that benefit. The International Monetary Fund in its global outlook last week said that as the U.S. Federal Reserve continues to tighten monetary policy, the dollar strength versus currencies in emerging and developing markets will add to inflation and debt pressures, and warned of a catastrophe at least as severe as the food emergency in 2007 to 2008. The media reported that while U.S. President Joe Biden did not mention Africa much in his national security strategy released last Wednesday, commander of the U.S. Southern European Task Force, Africa Major General Todd Wasman, said China and Russia understand very well Africa's strategic significance. They are seeking to influence events on the continent in their favor using political influence, disinformation, economic leverage, and malign military activity. CTAF F Command Sergeant Major are wide-ranging and they are demanding. Defense News reported that since the U.S. Army deployed the Second Security Force Assistance Brigade to ward off the growing Chinese and Russian influence on the continent in 2020, it has conducted activities in more than 15 countries across the continent, with a regular presence in 11 of them. Earlier, China opened its first overseas military base in 2017 in the coastal East African nation of Djibouti. Russia has also increased its military presence in Libya, Sudan, Mali, and the Central African Republic, often in the form of the Wagner Group. According to a September 2022 study published in the BJ Psych Open, using antidepressants for a period of 10 years is associated with a twofold increase of coronary heart disease, cardiovascular disease, cerebrovascular disease, and all cause mortality. The antidepressant drugs most closely associated with adverse heart effects were mirtazapine, valanfaxine, duloxetin, and trazotin, though certain serotonin reuptake inhibitors were also linked with heart complications. Uh, diagnosed with uh, heart disease that required heart surgery. According to a 2018 article in the New York Times, over 15.5 million Americans have been taking antidepressants for at least five years, and 25 million have taken them for two or more. The BJ Psych Open Study author said 70 million prescriptions were dispensed in 2018, amounting to nearly a doubling of prescriptions in a decade. Our findings emphasize the importance of proactive cardiovascular monitoring and prevention in patients who have depression and are on antidepressants. The media reported Russia's RIA news agency citing the defense ministry said two gunmen opened fire with small arms during a firearms training exercise last Saturday, targeting personnel who had volunteered to fight in Ukraine. RIA said the gunmen, whom it referred to as terrorists, were shot dead. The local authorities said on Sunday, Russia has opened a criminal investigation after gunmen killed 11 people at a military training ground near the Ukrainian border city of Belgorod. Russia's defense ministry said the attackers were from a former Soviet republic, but didn't elaborate further. A senior Ukrainian official said the two men were from the mainly Muslim Central Asian Republic of Tajikistan and had opened fire on the others after an argument over religion. Russia's investigative committee said 11 people died from gunshot wounds and another 15 were injured in the incident. 
Some Russian independent media outlets reported that the number of casualties was higher than the official figures. The media reported that thousands of people took to the streets of Paris last Sunday to protest soaring prices as weeks of strikes for higher wages at oil refineries spurred demands for a general strike. Jean-Luc Mélenchon, the leaders of the hard left party, Friends on Vout, marched alongside this year's Nobel Prize winner for literature, Annie Ernux. He called a general strike for Tuesday. Melanchon followed in the footsteps of four unions which have called for strikes and protests last Tuesday for wage increases. The media reported that several major labor unions are calling for a general strike from October 17th to October 18th. The action has been called to demand raising wages. In the public transport sector, a strike by train maintenance workers in Paris on October 17th will likely disrupt high-speed TGV, THALS, and Eurostar rail services. Unionized French National Railways workers will observe strike action on October 18th. Metro, train, bus, and tram traffic will likely experience moderate to significant disruption in Paris and across the country on October 18th. A fire at a SKCNC suburban data center south of Seoul last Saturday afternoon damaged server of South Korea's major tech companies, Kakao and Naver, causing extensive disruptions to the country's dominant messenger service and internet portal. Kakao Messenger and some affiliated services remained down for more than eight hours after the fire broke out. South Korean President Yoon suk yeol on Sunday, a day after the fire, called for swift measures to resume all services offered by Kakao and Naver. The media said the outages highlighted how reliant South Korea is on Kakao Messenger, which is the default form of communication for many government and business services. Korean President Yoon ordered the science and ICT minister to provide personal support and called for an investigation to identify the exact causes behind the incident. According to a company report in August, Kakao's messenger app, Kakao Talk, has more than 47 million active users in South Korea and 53 million globally. India launched 75 digital banking units last Sunday in villages and small towns across the country in a move that is said will help bring financial services and literacy to more citizens. The digital banking units, set up in collaboration with over 20 public and private banks, are brick-and-mortar outlets that are equipped with tablets and internet services to help individuals and small businesses open their savings accounts, access government-identified schemes, make transactions, and avail loans and insurance. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi said as even more than a billion bank accounts exist in India, people living in remote areas have had to typically take a day off from work to visit a nearby city for their banking-related work. He noted, this opened the way for loans for the poor without collateral and provided direct benefit transfer to the accounts of the targeted beneficiaries. These accounts were the key modality for providing homes, toilets, gas subsidy, and benefits of schemes for farmers could be insured seamlessly. Nikkei Asia reported the Japanese government is exploring the construction of bomb shelters on the southernmost Okinawa Islands near Taiwan to protect residents from missile attacks in the event of a military conflict in the Taiwan Strait. As a first step, the cabinet secretariat has requested 70 million yen or $477,000 during 2023 to conduct research. Nikkei said the government will prioritize building shelters on the Sakashima Islands in southern Okinawa, including Yanaguni and Ishigaki. The media said there are currently only six officially designated evacuation shelters in all of Okinawa Prefecture, all on the main island. Many islands in Okinawa Prefecture lack underground facilities that can serve as shelters. For this reason, the government will also consider building above-ground shelters. In July, Municipal representatives from the islands most vulnerable to a Taiwan conflict petitioned the Okinawa prefectural government to build shelters. Yonaguni, Okinawa is located just 110 kilometers from Taiwan. Funding News will help you sharpen your English skills and keep you informed about international current events. If you want to know more about our other programs and keep learning about the world's most important topics in English, 
please click the link in the description below to join Funday for free. I'm Johnny Wu, your host. I'll see you next time.